There's a story inside every smoke shop, with every cigar, and with every person. Come be a part of the cigar lifestyle of Boveda. This is Box Press. All right, welcome to another episode of Box Press. I'm your host, Rob Gagne, and today I'm at TPE sitting down with Storm Bowen of Cigars for Warriors. Stone. <laughs> Stone. Yeah, he just changed his name. Storm. It's not the first time. <laughs> Storm, thanks for joining me. This is a pleasure having you here. No, it's my honor to be with you guys. Y'all done so much for us over the years, so I'm excited to do it. Absolutely. I'm sure a lot of us out there know what Cigars for Warriors is because we see this in our smoke shops. There's oftentimes areas where we can donate cigars, give them to the Cigars for Warriors program. And what you're doing is you're getting those cigars packaged with Boveda, shipped across the continent into the other, wherever the, the troops are, and you're getting them distributed to them so that they can have a little bit of rest and relaxation in between combat. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we did a three-year survey to find out that cigars was the number one requested item. Now, there's a little bit of bias. It's a lot of the places we went to were in the cigar community, but we went to a lot of military uh, groups and websites and got a lot of feedback. Uh, guys requesting boxes, we put a nice list on it, and they sent it back that cigars was number one. Interesting, the number two and three, though, flip-flopped, depending on where they were and what year it was. It was either coffee or video games. So we've been sending a lot of coffee, a little bit of video games as we get it, but not a whole lot. We haven't really tapped into that. Yeah, right, 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 right. That's but, awesome, though. So it's cigars, coffee, and video games are the number one things to entertain them over there. Exactly. I never had a Nintendo or anything like that when I was deployed. So <laughs> and I don't drink coffee. So cigars was definitely my number one thing. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine playing the Nintendo and all of a sudden you're like, yo, we got to go. And you're like, all right, pause. <laughs> I, I had one of my guys, I said, my guy's a Navy SEAL guy. He was texting me, which is weird too. Cause when I got out, you weren't texting across, you know, he was in Syria of all places. He said, can you get us some cigars? I said, I can't get them to Syria. And he goes, no, no, I'll give you our APO. Right. So I sent him those cigars all the way into Syria, but getting a text message. That's was, unbelievable. Was, wow. So when did you start in your military career? I started in 96. And what I were you out, doing? I started out, I finished off in civil affairs. And it's not PAO, it's not public affairs, civil affairs, which is nation rebuilding. It's the smallest uh, special operations community in the Army. I think in all the branches, a small special operations unit. But the whole point of it is is to work with civilians. A lot of it's good humanitarian stuff, fun. There's some darker issues with it, especially during wartime. But all the great things you get to do, seeing, building things, growing things. And I was specific, usually charged like in Iraq, uh, helped put the Ministry of Justice back together. Uh, did a, I did all the training as far as the Mosul of the Iraqis from prisons to correction officers to firefighters, which I don't know anything about firefighting. <laughs> but I found a lieutenant that did, so we, we put a fire tower, built a big-ass training facility, rebuilt the prisons out there. So what is the program for to, to bring veterans back into civilization and get well, them jobs and training? it was designed originally in Vietnam of having reservists, because I got in the reserve system at this time, to use their civilian jobs to assist in a military mission. So if you were a school teacher, yep. you would help rebuild the school program, the education system. If you were a engineer, of course, you would be involved in a lot of the buildings and redesigning and stuff. But that didn't always happen since we were, we were just destroyed because of the high op tempo. We I mean, were going, being home for three months, being shipped back out again. Sure. Because there's, it just wasn't enough. I got to a point where they were cutting battalions in half sending squads only, which you got to imagine that's, that's you're, you're out there by yourself attached to a unit who doesn't know you. Wow. And a lot of them didn't even know what you did except for the commanders. Cause they wanted all the, you know, nice little OIC bullets saying what a great job they did because of a mission we did. Right. So it was fun. It was interesting. Um, I have a lot of good memories from it. Sure. Absolutely. So how did you decide to build cigars for warriors. How did that come about? Do you want the long story? I want the story? long story. All right. I'm not getting into all the details, but it started out with me and our original treasure, which you knew him, Ben Edmondson. 
And we, I just started Cats. We had blown up like crazy. There's only supposed to be five of us on Cats. And Cats is basically just a. It started out as the first cigar, well, first fest. trade and sales group. Period. And then it was the first group that, on Facebook at least, that did not, wasn't a fanboy of an individual manufacturer or a retailer. So we were basically open community, which no one had ever done that. Plus, we liked, we wanted women smokers on our community as well, which in those days. 2012, 2011 wasn't very kosher. Sure. Which I thought it was insane. I mean, women smokers typically have better palates than men anyway. Right. I mean, they got a little 29 million old factory senses we don't. So it just and down seemed, in the DR, those women are, that are rolling your cigars oh, are yeah. smoking them too. So I had no idea why that was such a bad thing. Plus, right. at the end of the day, you don't want to be in a room full of 13,000 guys. And yeah. So... Um, you were in the military once. You don't need to go back, right? Exactly. <laughs> right. Um, so, Cats was just supposed to be actually, I got my, I kept getting my ass chewed out on different social media. I was trying to learn, so I'd ask questions, but it was always in the wrong groups. Right. Like, if you don't know, get the hell out of here. That's usually not what they said. It was got a lot worse. Like, how do you season a humidor, guys? Oh, if you don't know how to do that, you, you're in the wrong place. Just crazy stuff. Nobody wanted to teach you? No. Well, people did, but it wasn't in these groups I was getting my ass chewed out. Oh, of. so was, like basically forums. You're yeah, like yes, forums. not finding any help whether or brotherhood. Whether it was on Facebook, whether it was uh, like a cigar.com. That's so interesting. Yeah, it was crazy. I didn't know all the unspoken rules. I got, the worst mistake I ever did was I was I liked acids. So I was real excited. I went to, on this online store. Didn't know anything about online store. Right. I said, I found a five pack for 20 bucks. And I posted thinking, I'm going to be a cool dude. Yeah. Holy shit. 500. You got lit later. up. Oh, it's bad. What are you doing not supporting a brick and mortar? Right. Well, my whole my whole mentality was if you're online, typically you have bought somewhere online. Right. Why hide it? Yeah. I think online cigars have saved the industry, in my opinion, which I've gotten a lot of heat for saying that. It's brought more people to introduce more cigars that they never would have tried before. That's it's, an interesting take. It's made more quality cigars and there's been more cigar shops open because they did get hooked to it. I got 12 different volunteers who started buying cigars in the middle of nowhere and now own their own cigar shop. See, now that's the one part is if there's not a brick and mortar near you, online might be the only way that's to go way or to call it. a brick and mortar that's near you that will ship, but not all of them ship. And not all want to put your products that you may want. You may go right. find a Caldwell cigar that just blew your socks off, but he or she may not want them in their store. Right. So what are you going to do? You're subject to their inventory. So but I, online, you're not. So I you never can understood find this whole evil, you're an evil person. Buying, I bought just as many cigars and brick and mortars, if not more. But there's sometimes you don't have a choice. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're saving money. So Yeah, there's a savings there. Cost I looked there. at it, and this is the way I described it online, is it's just like buying beer or going to the bar. You Good go to your point. cigar shop, it's like going to the bar. A little bit more expensive. But you're paying for the social aspect of it. You I like stay that. home and buy your beer. Not as much, but you don't get the social aspect. You buy your cigars. Right. Home. So that's how I equate that's it. That's a great way of explaining it. Just because I've been chewed out for every other way. Of explaining yeah, you, you had to come <laughs> up with something, right? So, I mean, I it's still controversial what I've said over the years because I still let, I've left it in the back of Cat's Rules. You know, there's no de being no defamation in any shops. I mean, right. stores, whether it's online or not, this is a free community to speak how you want on that. So it just, it blew up again. It was only supposed to be five of my buddies, but one of the guys opened it up on the little category <laughs> and I said, well, might as well run with it. Open the can and boy. So I was talking to Ben one day, going back to the original question, how we started. And we were just talking about experiences of what a cigar was in a combat zone where we were two totally different generations. He was in the Korean War in the submarine. Oh, wow. I was in basically, you know, Clinton days, Obama days, and Bush days. Uh, multiple different deployments everywhere, but definitely different generations. Sure. And our experiences were so similar, it was almost spooky. And really? After talking to other veterans, I started hearing the same story, what it meant. I thought my experiences were unique. I thought I was a unique, smart leader. Right. And so after bad days in Iraq, and this is what I was telling him, it's, I would make my guys, now that's not so kosher, but I would make my guys smoke a cigar. What we did was I would take my blouse off, which basically essentially took your rank off. And they knew for the next two hours they could say anything they wanted to. There was no rank involved. Now, given a lot of it was 
you know, four letter words directed toward me, <laughs> but it gave him a, a, a sense of relief, gave him feel like a home. It's right. weird how that cigar is one of the few things that make you truly feel like almost normal again. If it's just two hours of feeling normal, sometimes that's all it takes to actually keep your sanity. And that's so important that you say that because as soon as you, well, one, you, you clearly said that the cigar brought a common denominator between two, the two of you. So you took your rank off and now we're just two guys or a group of guys smoking cigars, enjoying each other's company. And the second thing is the reprieve. You gave them the opportunity to take two hours out of their day and not think about where they're at, what they're having to do to fight for their country and just sit down and enjoy each other's company and a good cigar. Man, you said that perfect. You want to come work for me? Yeah, man. I'll pay you twice as much as I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> which is volunteer work, which is another cool thing about Cigars for Warriors. It's all volunteer work. There is no administrative costs. There are no salaries being collected. Now, with being full transparency, we do have three people I give a small stipend to. Basically, a way to say thank you for your 20, 30 hours a week you put in. And you can buy a steak once a month. It's not very much, but it's, I mean, I wish I could pay them full salaries is how well these people work. And there's other people who do even more hours, but they refuse to take even a thank you stipend. Oh, wow. So I, I try to be really transparent about that just because it's what we do. Right. Um, it's definitely not remotely like a salary. Right. And then, uh, we, we sometimes, depending on our funds, the travel committee will let it give us a small per diem when we travel, especially like Vegas where it's so expensive. Right. But it usually pays about 30, 40% of our travel. Okay. So those are only real true transparent issues we never have about money. But Everything you're being else, very wise with the money so that you can actually do the work that you want to do. Exactly. We slowly built our marketing program, as you've seen. It's, yep. Every year it gets a little bit better as we sell the swag that that's usually goes into marketing and then everything else goes literally into buying postal. That's our biggest expense. Then you, as you know, there's all the little nickel dime like websites and third yep. party programs and that program. Um, but the postal is the charges biggest. is the biggest expense by probably 80%. I'm just guessing at that. Number. So that's what, like if people donate their dollars, you're really turning that into like, Hey, let's use this to pay for the postage. Cause yes, we need cigars to be donated. We need Bovada to go in there, which we donate on our end. But really what we can do with our funds is also help provide the postage to the APO that gets it out there for them. And we have warehouses. We have three, well, I say warehouses. I think we have three storage units. Sure. I say warehouses. They're 10 by 10. So just tell you how big our big warehouses are. It's amazing. But it works great for us for different donations, for keeping. I, mean, I never thought we'd have enough money to have one storage unit. Right. So and we've had some pretty serious bylaws where we have to have certain funds always within the bank. Sure. Uh, and that gives us basically, it's designed to give us an 18 month cushion if something really bad happens. And we're very, very tight on that. And after that, we can do special projects like websites, marketing, you know, our booth right. looks better this year than it's ever looked. Um, and people get involved mainly through retail shops and or local chapter uh, leaders that will say, hey, I'm doing a Cigars for Warrior collection, anything you can give as far as cigars and money, and then they get it to you. Right. We'll have event coordinators. They're formal volunteers. Volunteer process is still like getting a job. You get to do an application. You have to do an interview. Hey, you got you to make sure we get good people. It takes one bad apple for right. a charity. And then the other thing, we have a lot of people who want to call title hunters. They just want that title on their resume, which sure. I don't have a person problem with as long as they're doing to do the work. Well, that's just it. You don't want to have a volunteer that doesn't do the work because you have a true mission and true target goals, just like any other business. This is like a business. It just doesn't have a profit stream for you to tap into like a business. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are a corporation. We got our 501c3 after I got our... LLC, uh, Article Associations, to the whole MP. Our nonprofit is, is actually out of Florida. Sure. Um, that's where Ben lived. Um, so Ben and me were talking about, and I was telling him what it meant. He's basically saying almost the same thing. They would have a four or five days under the water, and they'd come up, and they'd all smoke a cigar on top of the submarine. And he was saying the same feelings. And he said, there's a guy on, it, on Facebook that's running around giving cigars to the troops. It's called Cigars for Troops. 
So I found him and I started, I brought him into my world and we started helping him. And I brought in six more people and we were going good. We worked with this guy for about eight weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. I don't remember exactly. Come to, and he claimed he was a Navy SEAL commander that it was injured in OIF. Well, come to find out he wasn't even in the military. Oh, man. And we only know of one person of the probably 30 packages we sent that got anything. We can't say 100% they didn't, but knowing history of what we got from our troops, we get pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, comeback with emails saying thank you. Right. So only one pack, package getting to one person. So we know he's a fraud. So A little bit of a fraud there. That's a bummer. I got this fly that really likes me. Yeah, he's digging you. So uh, we to say the least. I was done. I wasn't gonna. I'm, you were uh, done with it. Yeah, I bought into it. I was still in the military. I was on medical. So okay, that, that was kind of a little scary because now I got this shady guy that could tie into my name before I retire. Sure. So I was done. Well, Lane Dimonato, who is last found co-founder with me. Uh, that's still on the board. She calls me and gives me an earphone and says, the one thing is always stuck in my mind says we need to still do this. It's a quote. It's a beautiful mission. And for whatever oh, reason, right. that just really clicked in my head. And then my wife's over saying, you need to do it. Yeah. You know, you, you're the first time I've seen you excited since you got hurt. So we did. So but I called him. I said, oh, God, I got three conditions. One, I don't want to run anything. Two, we have to go hard and fast. Three, we do everything by the books. We do our bylaws, our associations, NPO status, 501c3, all of it. And I said, I'll do all of that because I have experience doing it. But we had we all go hard and fast. Right. So I got two out of three of my wishes. <laughs> and I guess I understand why they wanted me to do the CEO because I was retired. Sure. I'm about to be retired. So I had a little bit more free time. Um, I had no regrets taking it over. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm kind of glad at the end of the day I did because I'm one of those guys that's always wanting to push farther and doing. And if I'm always having to ask someone above me to do it, I would go insane. So Yeah, just do it yourself. It was probably God's intervention that Yeah, happened. Yeah, you asked that you didn't want to have to run it, but guess what? God had a better plan and said, hey, you're the right guy to run it. And it's, you know, what the best part about it, people always, always assume that we started out with this big master plan. We always assume this is going to be a two to three hour hobby a month. Really? We never imagined. So just to give you a little bit of clearer explanation of that, our first board of director meetings, after we did the voting for positions, which is when I found out that I wasn't going to be a secretary yeah. or something, <laughs> um, I said, okay, we need a first year, almost impossible goal or impossible goal of what we want to send out. We're on Google Hangouts because we're all over the country. In fact, we had one guy in Afghanistan and one guy on a ship. Oh, wow. So we had one that was a contractor. He was our vice chair, first vice chair. And then our first military liaison was a captain on a ship. And he was able to get on the sure. social media stuff. So we're all on Google Hangouts and everybody's looking at each other like, I don't know. And so I just randomly said, how about we send 800 cigars to our troops? And immediately it was like, who are we going to send them to? How are we going to find those numbers? How are we going to pay for it? Who's going to be doing sending? You know, all the questions. I was like, I don't know. That's why it's an impossible goal. <laughs> I have no idea how to do this, but we'll for figure it out. the first month, though, we shipped out 860 cigars. The first month? The first month we you broke You crushed it. your goal. And the first year, we sent out a little over 92,000. <laughs> what a lot of people don't know is that Boveda was on board with us before we were even Cigars for Warriors. Really? So we weren't even an entity. Well... That's not true. I own the name Cigars for Troops. So that way, no one can ever use it. I do know there's some mom and pop programs that are still left. And that's fine. But we didn't want this guy to ever try to rehash right. it out there. Right. So he didn't even have it bought. He didn't have the name trademarked. So, so. you trademarked cigar, Cigars, cigars for, for Troops, troops and, and Cigars, cigars for, for Warriors. Warriors. And a few other things. Sure. CFW, Op CFW, all that. Right. Um, now I got distracted. I wouldn't. Well, you're saying Bova stepped in to oh, try to help yeah. you preserve the cigars for when you ship them over. Exactly. Even more importantly is because of Bova and the different humidity packs, we have to have a system of rehab because people don't always know how to take care of their cigars. They turn on and donate very dry. Right. Or the shop owner doesn't keep the humidifier filled up. Right. 
so we sometimes we get some very dry cigars. Now, if they're damaged, they get tossed. I'm not going to send a soldier. Right. That's not worth it. We're not talking about a cracked foot. We're talking about shit falling apart. Right. And uh, But without Boveda, we wouldn't be able to do the cyst rehab system. Um, so that's also extremely important, people don't realize. And because of Boveda, we can guarantee when someone donates those cigars, they're going to come in healthy to the troops. That's good. And whether it's Drew Estate or whether it's, you know, Joe Smo off the street is donating a cigar. He or she wants to know that that cigar is be taken care of. Right. And not being, there's another thing, not being cherry picked. Yes. Um, over the years, we've had a couple of people try to start rumors like, oh, they cherry pick all the cigars. Uh. We get, we were getting at one time, we were shipping 50,000 cigars a month. There's no way my, my senior logistics guy is cherry picking cigars. Right. Not to mention he worked at his own cigar shop. So I, yeah. I never understood where that came from or how it came out. But every once in a while I hear it. Yeah. And that was, those times I'll kind of get non-politically correct. on that Right, topic. right, 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 right. Uh, but that's pretty much the beginning. We all, there were six of us, including I also considered Jonathan Drew as a founder because he basically pushed getting everything done the right way before he had a ton of different charities they were supporting but he wanted to turn around. He didn't really understand if they were all real charities and the, if the stuff they were giving to guys that are doing raffles were getting to the right places. Right. So he wanted to put all his eggs in one basket. But before that, he wanted to see the bylaws. He wanted to see our associations. He wanted so to he see, combed through your data. Oh, big time. I he love it. He a lot of it. Um, he wanted to meet all the board of directors before anyone wow, else he did. Wow, he, he is committed. really thorough when he invests in But when he did, something. he went through it. Uh, so... I can't say thank you enough to both Boveda and Drew Estate that had the guts enough to get behind us. And I, you know, since you got to mention that, you got to mention the first cigar shop, right? Which was cigar, which is Smokers Haven, out of Lubbock, Texas. Oh and sure. John Curtis didn't really blink an eye. He said, "Yeah, I want to do it." So, what was his role in it? Was he shipping the cigars out or providing no, he was, cigars? He was, he was a donation center. Our first donation center, meaning that there's a humidor in the store. People donate cigars. And then he turns around and mails them to us. Oh, yeah, because you guys have humidors with your logo on it that says, hey, donate to this humidor, and we'll get them taken care of. So right. he put the first Cigars for Warrior humidor in his store. Correct. Now, they're not exactly Cigars for Warrior humidors. It's their humidor. But I've seen the Cigar for Warrior stickers gone, yeah. on humidors. Yeah, the shop can dress them up. Some shops have gone attention. and bought really neat ones that are etched to glass with our logo on it. Some have got wooden ones engraven. But just for everybody's information, it belongs to the store. We don't produce those. We right. can never afford it. Now, right. we, we are working on our program. It. We're hoping to do something like that. But maybe that's about a year down the road. Sure. Uh, but they were the first one. Now we have 450. And those numbers, just like volunteers, go Well, you let down. me know if you need any Boveda humidors. We'll put them in shops with your logo on them. Let's do it. Absolutely. That's a great project. We got some well. ideas right here, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good idea. Other than... Obviously, the Cigars for Troops guy being a total fraud. Were there certain things or moments that happened in the beginning that you thought, this isn't going to work? Oh, yeah. First six months. I would say almost every day. Really? Um, we had a lot of you know, ideas. Uh, ben Edmondson and me pretty much fought every day. The benefit of us, we always came up with a better idea. What were you guys fighting about? Well, I see things right. He's seeing things left. I see things left. He's see things right. But it always we always caught the holes. Now, with some of these bigger programs, it's all about checks and balances. We we have we do our best, even though there's a lot more red tape involved, to have very secure checks and balances. Some that we're very proud of, and it's what got his platinum status on uh, GodStar.org. It's that transparency and the fact that we have so many checks and balances in place. That's awesome. Because, you know, it just takes one bad thing to destroy a whole charity. Right. One cherry picking or one weird thing that the money didn't go to the right, right. spot. I mean, you have people who just love to see be the person that make, brought down a charity. Not because they don't like them. Just because right. they want that, that viral video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. So right. we're very conscious about that. We also know we're very non-politically correct, but uh, we're very proud of being one of the most transparent charities in the United States. Sure. And we know that because of GuideStar being told we're 0.05% ever make it to platinum status. So Amazing. So other than you guys fighting, were there were there times where you 
went to Ben and said, hey, we got to shut it down. I don't think this is going to yeah, work. Yeah, I was hitting a lot of 12, 18, 16 hour days of just seven days a week. And you get burned out very quickly. Um, what started helping me was when I started doing events and meeting recipients coming back. That re-energizes you. Oh, big time. Every time I met her, and it sounds almost uh, polished what I'm saying, but it's not. Every time I meet the guys or gals, it would really re-energize me. It got me fired up again. So the pe the troops that are receiving these cigars would come back to you and be so grateful that that would give you the feel to be like, all right, I'm on the right track. I'm ready to go we again. We know we're doing something right. Yeah. And the stories went so much beyond really what our first mission was is basically saying thank you. So the mission was just to say thank you for your service. Just thank you so much for being out there. But what did it turn into it, when you heard those stories? It's just turned into something as crazy as something as simple as a cigar. It's turned into something that meant so much of these guys. It gave them a camaraderie they never had, even though in military you already have a really tight bond, but allowed cigar clubs in the military to pop up. There really wasn't any before we started this. Right. Now there's hundreds of them. There's cigar clubs with hundreds of chapters. You got clubs that are just all Army. You got clubs that are all Navy. You got clubs that are mixed U.S. forces. You got clubs that are mixed all forces, whether it's NATO, UN. You got clubs that have trans uh, your, your contractors. Now, once we send you those cigar, Sergeant, you can give them to whoever you want. So you'll see a lot of pictures of the contractor smoke cigars or an Albanian wearing his uniform smoking cigar. People are like, so it's trans, it's going into other militaries in other countries when they're working together. They say, hey, let's work together. And more importantly, let's share a cigar. We just did a great mission. We got a guy in Canada and we got a guy in England right now are trying to do the same thing. We're giving as much advice as we can. That's and awesome. And even talking about potential once they get grown up to, of linking together. Was there one story that shocked you when you first heard it? You were like, wow, I would never thought yeah. Cigars for Warriors could provide that to somebody. It was the very first cigar fest I went to. And we had a booth. I only had about four volunteers in those days. And several stories came out that year. It was some of them, if I said it or wrote it down, it would just sound absolute right. BS. It would sound like I'm trying to sell you the charity. But so I don't really ever put it out there because I always feel like it's not our place to do it. But we had four guys to show up, three guys to show up, excuse me. And they, four of them met in, in Iraq and it was all because of the cigars we were sending to one of the cigar clubs and they would smoke every Friday night together and they came such good friends and they found out when they came back the cigars wars were going to be a cigar fest they all decided to go from different parts of the country right but one of them on the way had a heart attack and died oh my god but they wanted to keep going because they knew the guy would want that right don't and stop the trip on my behalf. They wanted to do a Purple Heart video, and all, I did all that with them. And they started telling me, and they're just bawling. Just what it meant to them, how it brought them together. You know, the fact that they just lost one of their comrades and what it meant to them. They still wanted to keep coming. So that just really impacted me the way I thought of it. Um, had another gentleman, and again, this sounds way not true, but the guy came up and said, yeah, I don't know why. I'm a sergeant major. But the day your box showed up, the night before that day, I was con considering pulling the trigger. He said, I can't tell you why. I don't have any suicidal issues, but the stress of whatever it was, wow. that day that box showed up literally changed the way I was thinking that day. That's amazing. So, again, if I wrote that down, most wow. people look at you going, that's absolute BS. It gave me chills. And there's been other great stories. Just meeting the, the women and men and women is great. And I keep saying women because a lot of people don't realize, well, I've had this question. What do you send to the women? Cigars. cigars. <laughs> they request them. We don't send them randomly. That's something very, very important is when we get them, we actually have the ability to vet them because we've always had active duty people come back as volunteers. So you're sending them to troops that are asking for cigars as care packages. Correct. It's not just, hey, here's a care package. I hope no. you guys like cigars. No. They come that is in, so cool. They specifically are requesting our care packages. We hope there's coffee in there. It's one of our goals to have coffee. So coffee and cigars are the two main things that you yeah, want to send over that's there. Cutters, lighters, we like those. Oh, that's right. You also accept cutters and lighters to send over there so that they can actually do. I mean, otherwise the cigar is kind of just pointless. Right. So they need to be able to cut and light it. And I forgot about that. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, and 
we used to get a lot of them from Zycar when they were doing the lifetime warranty. They would turn around and refurbish their yeah. lighters and cutters, and they would send them all to us. Wow. That was, that was a pretty neat deal when that because they were shipping to different, right. different little organizations, all the refurbished. So they decided just, again, like JD did, put all his eggs in one basket. And that was great because we were sending out thousands of lighters and cutters, and then other people were donating out of their own collections. So that helps too. Is and quality it, importers still doing that? Um, they sent us a big package right before the COVID. Okay. So I don't know their policies anymore. If they're still doing refurbished or not. Um, I know we have, we still work with them. Um, so Great. I have no issues. So that's, you, you can donate cigars, money, lighters and cutters. Those are the top things that they need. And you also have a program what we're smoking right now is the Cigar for Warrior by Hiram and Solomon, and it's the Live to Serve. 100% of the proceeds from this cigar go to your foundation. Correct. So Abe out of PDR made this for us and Hiram and Solomon. Eddie, the owner of Hiram and Solomon, came just wanted to do this project. And we I'd already built a program years ago, but I never thought it was the right time or I didn't think it would be much success. So we built a synergy program. Basically, synergy, for those that don't know, is you put any two elements and come into the greater element than you would add individually. Right. So I like to say one plus one is three. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So not only helping us, we're helping them, and we're helping the troops. So it's a nice win-win for everybody. You can only be, you can only get these limited cigars in donation centers. Only donation centers can have them in their store. Okay, so you have to go to a donation center to get it. Right. Okay. Uh, it's limited. We have our second company, which will be Hi uh, Caldwell on July 4th, gets released. It's going to be uh, Long Live the Kings, Not it's plural, and it's called, called Minutemen. And it's going to be a nice Maduro cigar. So Caldwell is going to do the same thing here. Actually, I think he's changing it to Mofos, his Mofos line, okay, uh, which is a little bit more limited cigar. But again, he's donating 100% to us. Wow. Um and what are the cigars running for price point? Right now, these two, this one and Caldwell's will be ten dollars MSRP. So Great. You buy, go to the store, it's ten dollars. And I'm not really good at palate and tasting ne cigars. Neither am I. <laughs> but I think this is a twelve, thirteen dollars cigar, and I don't normally would say that. Um, I'm not saying it just because. Because last thing I want you to do. This is a great cigar. I don't want someone calling me and say, "Hey, I thought this was a twelve dollars cigar. It tastes like ass." Right. So. Uh, I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, me and a few guys actually got to pick it, this blend out. Do you think there'll ever be an opportunity to try to sell these online so you can reach people that can't get to a location? Depends on the donation center. If they want to sell theirs online, I don't care. Okay. So, so like could you go to the website CI, and find a donation center? Right. You go to our website. Find, we're going to release a list pretty What's soon. the website's URL real quick? Cigarsforwarriors.org. Cigarsforwarriors.org. You and can it, find a site that would carry this cigar, the coffee. That's another thing you're doing. We don't have the list out yet. So after the trade show, Eddie's going to write us a list. Well, out. we're going to make a list because we're just going to air that. And now you're going to have to do it, right? Exactly. Now I don't have a choice. <laughs> you can't delay that project right? now. There's a demand. So it's, it's been pretty good. And we got Cavalier goes out on Veterans Day in September, November 11th. What's the Cavalier? Cavalier is a cigar company that's really gotten big in Europe. Cavalier Geneva? Yes. And they're going to make a cigar for you? Yes. Oh, wow. So we're pretty excited. Look, the couple's a very nice couple that yeah. own it. Sebastian uh, and his wife? Sebastian's a phenomenal guy. So we're excited to be working with her. Still working out some of the details on it. Love it. But so you've got committed. these different limited edition cigars coming out to help support the funding that you need to send the projects over to the troops. Correct. We're Our goal is to have six companies only ever because we don't want to overwhelm the donation centers. Most donation centers would take two or three, five, six boxes every two months. That'd be okay. Sure. But if we were doing one every two weeks, we'd right. overwhelm them. Same right. thing with the consumers. A lot of guys, our big, our big supporters love chasing things. They would yeah. chase our cigars. They'll, they could afford to get a box or two every right. two months. But if I was doing one every two weeks, they'd overwhelm and they would just not buy anything. That's smart. So we're doing that. We're adding the, the coffee, which we're very proud of. It's our first coffee company. And Jensen's doing it for us. And they're doing a piece of the proceeds for every bag of CFW coffee sold. But way more important is 
they're being so generous. They're going to donate the same blend of coffee back to us to give to the troops. Okay. So not only is there a portion of the funds being donated to you, they're saying we'll take another same amount of that coffee and send it over to the troops free of charge. Yeah, the, the blend. So you know that they're getting just as good as you're getting. Yeah. Which is a big thing. I mean, think about a lot of companies will say, all right, we're going to sell this to consumers and then we're going to give you that. So the bags of coffees can only be bought at locations Two, two bags of coffee can be bought online at their company, but you can go to our website and find the links very quickly. So you can buy the coffee online and get it shipped to you? Two, yes, two of them. I love it. It's, we have a dark roast and a medium roast. They're all based on Army Corps values, the names of them. All right. Um, and they buy it, we get a bag of coffee. And you get your name on that bag of coffee being sent to the troops. Really? So, so if I bought a coffee, yeah. it'd say Rob Gagne, and courtesy of Rob Gagne, here you go, have coffee yeah, on me. Very back of it, it has a little label that says thank you, tells all about Cigars for Warriors, about the coffee company, and it says thank you to, and they're going to handwrite your name on it. And if the retailer buys a retail coffee, which is a totally different blend, a little higher bean, uh, we get a little bit smaller cut, which is fine, because, again, the most important thing is, Again, the company's going to donate a bag for every right. bag bought. So if you got a retailer who buys 50 bags, we get 50 bags right then and there that it. has that retailer's name on it. I'm doing cigar and coffee pairings with this coffee. Here we go. You guys are going to get some exposure. Now let's get some support for this because this is a great cause. The best thing to have they call their shop and say, hey, do you got that? Because whether yeah. they do or not, it's going to incentivize the shops to start looking for these cigars right. coming out. I love that. And it helps us get new donation centers that Hiram and Solomon may have a store that we're not in. And vice versa, we have a store that Hiram and Solomon's not in, they get in. And the nice thing is we're doing is trying to be easy on the retailer as much as possible by putting no demands. Otherwise, like a lot of brands come out, you've got to buy six faces to get this. Right. 20 faces. All you have to do is buy a minimum of two boxes. Two boxes. So it's cake Perfect. for a retailer. Awesome. There's no pressure of turning around and adding 20 faces, but it gives a chance to you guys, your your customers, to try a hiring a song they never had. Right. Or they had one they didn't really enjoy in the past, try a new one. Absolutely. So. I love it. Two opportunities, not only to get something from the club, Cigars for Warriors, or not the club, but the foundation, but really to support it. Yeah, and if there's anybody who buys 50 bags of coffee at one shot, we'll work with them and put a collaboration on the, and create a new label. Oh, wow. So let's say, uh, I don't know, Famous Smokes bought 50 bags of coffee. We're going to reformat it and have it basically a Famous Cigars Wars. So a coffee. business could say, hey, w one of our charity gives this this season is going to be supporting Cigars for Warriors and do a project where they not only get to impact, impact the troops, but also get to see a little bit of a brand opportunity out of it. Well, we try to do everything is, and it's very, very important to us is we want the people who support us to come out ahead more than a charity. And I know people always say, well, the charity should be first. But at the end of the day, we're all regular, regular volunteer people who don't really want to put our hands out. We want you guys to come to us saying, we want to support this cause. Yeah. And we want to do it because it's also good business. Yeah. The, co the donation center is built around 100% how to make that donation center more money. Because right. we're going to get our donations just naturally. And the better they do, the better we do. Right. So they just fall in. It's a very simple minimum standard program to be in. I mean, right. basically we're talking about a humidor, some signs, and near the cash register, and you're good to go. Right. Um, but you got to do the paperwork, and you got you know, give us all the POS piece, get all the information out to us. Right. But it's, it's a very serious program, we're, and I'm excited to actually give back. In my opinion, this is giving back to those retailers that have supported us all these years. Now you get something that the shop down the road may not because they're not a donation center. Right. So I it's love a win win. It. Now, how we help Boveda, I don't know because y'all have done so much. I mean, I, the numbers, you'd have to come and tell me the numbers of bags I've donated to us. I have no idea. I would, if it's, if you said under 100,000 right underneath that, I would probably say that's probably. How close. many cigars have you sent overseas? 1.2 million. Right under 1.2 million? 1,000 away from 1.2 <laughs> million. <laughs> 1.2 million cigars. And if it hadn't been for the deeming, we would have been way beyond that. Wow. But there's silver linings and everything. 
Right. It, it was able, because we had to cut the number of cigars being sent out, still a lot, we had more room in the boxes to add coffee, add a couple more magazines, add different stuff like that. Sure. So, like, Boba came up with a cool swag they wanted to put in there, have them have their name on it. Yeah, we're going to put it in there, and it gets more attention to the different companies. Right. People don't realize, especially the cigar companies, I mean, preach it to them, but the cigars you smoke when you're in combat zone, you're going to remember the rest of your life. What I smoked yesterday, I honestly couldn't tell you. <laughs> so it's good. You're, and it's and the military market is growing like that in cigar smokers. Right. The rest of the world, cigar smokers, a slight decline. Really? So your new market is, has to be those. You got to think about those troops being a huge new market. Right. I mean, it's not, the military is not something real tiny. So the more they can get involved in the, and get their name in there, the more their sales over the years are going to increase. And I get guys all the time asking, who's the newer, newest cigar shop that helped you out? What manufacturer helped you out the most that we got cigars from? They really want to know these questions. And we tell them. So the troops want to know who's supporting you so I can go support them. Correct. They're pretty loyal. I've had more guys go into a cigar shop, buy two boxes, turn around and donate just because they got some boxes from us. Wow. They're basically turn around and giving it back to the guys. That's amazing. Again, it just tells you that our program turned out to be more than just saying thank you. Absolutely. And I hate saying it because it sounds so um, conceited or arrogant about it, but no, it doesn't. The meeting has just evolved so much. It's something beyond what we ever dreamed of. Because like you said, you're not making it up. It is truly the impact that they are thinking, that they feel, that right. they think that this gave to them. I mean, to hear that somebody was so down in the dumps that that box turned their life around to make them feel like, hey, yeah, I can keep going on another day. That's a huge program. It's, it's overwhelming some days. Um, it's blessing and most days. You're doing uh, a big thing for people. It keeps me out of trouble, as my yeah. wife says. Um, you know, since the COVID, now it's killed us on donation, as you can imagine, but we've still survived through donation centers. Um, a lot of guys are still going up to the curbside, buying cigars and telling them to throw a five pack in. Again, it's wow. not as much as we were. Of course, the monetary donations have just gone down. But with all that said of the COVID, there was a silver lining and is that we were able to get a lot reorganized within the, the charity. I'm always looking for more efficient ways. Right. Um, get, you know, the volunteers, is, at the end of the day, the volunteer program is always about the rock star volunteers. Yeah. Um, the volunteers that want a title or realize that they got in and they didn't realize it's going to take them more than an hour a month. Right. Or the family happens. And that's what happens. In most of the volunteers life happens. Yep. They, and then we always preach to them, just tell us you need to step down. You can step back up anytime you're willing. That's the ones good. That just, but you got some that'll just disappear because they they don't want to tell us they're stepping down. Yeah, there's a bit but of shame there. But you're, it's nice that your program is allowing people to step in and out of life comes volunteer. First. Families have to come first. It's the biggest thing. There's no soldier, no airman, no marine who would ever want a family to be harmed right. for a cigar. And I I can't imagine any soldier ever saying anything different because in a day, you become, you become in the military – it isn't for the paycheck. I, for the yeah. <laughs> so it's it's something you it's in you, just right. like police officers. You don't do you don't become a police officer for pay, and I guess you don't do it anymore for social media coverage either. Right. Uh, so it's a servant leadership type of a it, role. It's people who want to do service. They want to yes. give back, and you can't tell me any different. Um, you, do you have bad apples, bad players? Sure, but you put twenty guys that like Tupperware, you're going to have ten percent of them are bad players. The right. military is way less than that. It's probably 1% at that. Right. Um, so it's something I'm very proud of, but I'm more importantly, I'm more proud of what the volunteers have done over the years. Just Sounds like it. Amazing what these you got a good team and a good sense of the whole organization runs on a very clear mission. And we, we have probably, and we have what we consider, it's called an active board of directors. They don't just meet once a month. They, the higher you go up in that organization, the more work you do. And the goal is more higher up in the organization, the more you support the event coordinators at the bottom of the hierarchy, per se. I give, the, you know, at the end of the day, the event coordinator is the heart of the organization. So we, we channel all our energy to focus on supporting those guys. It's not about a power trip. It's not about having a new title. 
it's at the end of the day, it's about serving those guys. So that's where the model came from, live to serve, is it follows all aspects of everything about CFW. Whether we're talking about great sponsors like Boveda, y'all serve by serving us. Whether we're talking about a guy donating a cigar, donating money, talking about a retailer, talking about a manufacturer, it's all about serving. And at the end of the day, it's also about the troops themselves serving. Right. So we're all living to serve. So that's where we came with the model. And Eddie liked it so much when he started seeing it being posted, where he asked if we could use it for the first cigar. I said, well, that's only poetic being the first one to come up. Right. So, Such a cool story. It's, you know, it's, I mean, to have all these companies really wanted to make these cigars for us and make nothing out of it, it says a lot about a company. Yeah. A lot about a company, a lot about your organization because they know they can trust it. And that's something I'm very proud of as well. And it blows my mind that people have that level of trust with us as well. Right. So I've been blessed. I'm happy. The industry is a phenomenal industry to be involved in. Ha absolutely. Um, we're moving more and more outside the industry, which I'm also happy about. Um, there's only so many times I can call Rob and tap you on the shoulder for another donation. <laughs> so we need to get more outside influences. Absolutely. And it's slowly getting there. And it's that's a nice, neat thing to see as well. And we got some pretty cool things coming up in the future that we're working on. That's awesome. So the best way people can get involved in understanding what you're doing is going over to cigarsforwarriors.org. Going to the .org and going to the Facebook. Facebook? Group. Okay. The page is active, but the group, you're going to see the troops' photos. They post photos there or they send them to us. We'll post it. The letters. That gives you really a true idea of what we're doing. That gives you more sense of confidence the mission is going, that we're not two guys just talking on the radio. Right. It's showing you that here's your evidence that the men and women are smoking cigars, and it's a lot. Right. And you guys imagine that the care packages I got, I never sent a thank you letter to any of them. I mean, bad as that sound, uh, toilet paper and, and baby wipes just wasn't in, in the chart right. line. So we get letters written back to our... So that's just it. That means a lot for the fact that they took time out of whatever crazy schedule they have. Right. Um, to write a letter. Another big thing that people need to know is that Afghanistan is not the only place we send to. Right. Um, and yes, they have a drawdown, but they're still close to 20 to 30,000 troops in the Middle East alone. We also send to Africa, a lot of Africa. We, we send a little bit to Korea. We're opening Korea up more and more as Afghanistan's dropping. Korea's got so many troops there, so we're slowly opening that market up. Okay. And so it's going everywhere. Yeah. And I guarantee you all the troops that are leaving Iraq and Afghanistan are going to end up somewhere in the Middle East. Right. Just because of what the political geopolitical atmosphere is right now. Right. So I, I hate when people say, what are you going to do now that Af everybody's leaving Afghanistan? Nothing's There's going still to troops <laughs> out there. Active troops. Yeah. I mean, out. Newsweek, I didn't come up with these numbers. Newsweek came up with these numbers. Right. Um, so... It, it, we're still out there. It's still a very viable mission. Um, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, active duty isn't gone down. No. But that's good for us to know. There's it, What's key is that there are troops out there that need this support. Correct. And we have more and more everyday social clubs, whether they're just internet clubs or, or they're standing in a cigar shop club, that have us as primary or secondary charities. Like the oh, Smoking wonderful. Shields is a perfect example. So there's another place you can go find about cigars for you if you have a local club around or if you're on social media, you find one of those clubs. Um, and that's been pretty fun having these clubs build these big events and competing against each other. Uh, the Houston club, the warehouse club out there is still the champ of donations. Oh yeah. And they're bringing in anywhere between 10 and 15,000 in cash and usually four to five, 6,000 cigars. Wow. But 10 to 15,000 the cash. They'll take their, they'll take their members and they'll volunteer to be event coordinators for just the month of September and they'll do two to three events every weekend of cigar drive and then there's this big after after party where a lot of the manufacturers have been invited also turn around dump a trunk load of cigars to us and it just builds up so and then cigar shops start competing against each other pulling out their stock they don't want anymore I love it and uh, so we've changed it now we call the most patriotic cigar shop in Texas competition Love it. Uh, that's going to get, that's going to blow. That's one of the things we're looking forward to blowing up. Uh, blue smoke out of, or smoke ring out of Sugarland has, has been the champion of that one for the last few smoke years. Smoke ring? 
Yeah. Shout out to Smoke Ring, keeping it, keeping it very fresh. Those guys are phenomenal. They 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 go nuts. That's awesome. Yeah. Storm, I want to thank you so much for one starting it, keeping it going, and then bringing it to us so that we can help out. I appreciate you guys, especially Boba. Without Boba, we'd have never been a one to afford to humidify or get that trust. I, I don't think people realize that by saying there's Boba in all the packages, it instantly creates trust of what the product's being taken care of. Great. So that's a that's a good thing for your name that you have that trust that people right. really look up to the brand Boveda. Right. And again, I like people to know that you were the first ones to jump on board before you even had a name. I mean, that's something pretty cool. That's just like, that's faith. Je Jeff and, and, uh, uh, got the, got the rep. I used Sean to, and Tim. You know, there was and a rep that y'all had forever. Charlie, Charlie, Russ, he was our, my first point of contact forever. And he would just take care of us left and right. And it's wonderful. So, I, again, thank you all, Boba, and thank you for always having us on the show. Hey, you're welcome. Anytime. We appreciate it. Thank you again for tuning in for another episode of Box Press. As always, if you need more information, head over to cigarsforwarriors.org. Anything that you need as far as Boba, head over to bovadainc.com. Like and subscribe and get involved. They need your help. Appreciate it. <laughs>